The next phase of reopening Texas started today and gyms across the state welcoming back their customers. It comes on the same day the governor is expected to announce what next steps will be. Yelling, turning to throwing objects at a convenience store clerk, and it was all caught on camera. Now San Antonio police are asking for your help to find the suspect. And the hot temperatures are back. How hot can we go today and tomorrow? We've got the latest forecast coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Governor Greg Abbott expected to make an announcement this afternoon explaining the next phase to reopen the state of Texas. It comes after the governor has been in contact with local governments and business owners to see what areas can reasonably reopen next. The news conference is scheduled for two this afternoon. We will air it live right here on KSET 12, and you can also stream it on KSET.com or on your KSET TV apps. Meantime, another step in reopening the state made today. Gyms all across the Lone Star State can get back up and running. Max Massey gives us an inside look at the Anytime Fitness in the 8,000 block of Tezel, how they are operating and how members picked up the weights dark and early this morning. I couldn't even stay asleep. I woke up like 30 minutes before my alarm just to make sure I got here and do uh, my leg workouts. Couldn't wait since last month I've been aching to come back. When the owner, Michael Lajeunesse, heard that he had to lock down his facility, it hit him hard. But now they are ready for a bulky comeback. We're stoked that we can reopen now and obviously happy that we can like service our members the way that we want. So whether it's weights, body exercises, or cardio. No matter how you're getting your fitness, one of the top priorities is safety and making sure that you're as clean as possible. We're limiting the amount of people that are allowed in the gym, so 25% capacity is what's being limited. And we're following all the regulations, obviously, that we have to for the CDC and obviously what comes down from Bear County. This is probably one of the cleanest gyms I've been to, to be honest. As long as we practice safe distancing and all that kind of stuff, then we should be fine. Micah tells us his mission with the gym is to help San Antonio help our community fight obesity and fight all the problems that's associated with it. A message that resonates with David. One point in my life, I was really, really heavier and I started getting like high blood pressure and you know, pre-diabetes. So the doctor said, you either need to get on this medication or you need to get fit. I don't want to take the medication. I'd rather get fit. Just do your thing. It's International Chest Day. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. We're going to get an update on the number of cases across Bear County tonight. It'll be the latest update since Friday. Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Judge Nelson Wolf say that the Metro Health data team took the weekend off. They say the numbers that will come in will still be broken down by each day and include those with and without symptoms. Meanwhile, cases in Texas as a whole have continued to increase with hundreds of cases being confirmed in Amarillo over the weekend. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says blood supply is now at a two-day inventory. The center and university health system say the demand for blood has increased 40% over the past week. That is likely due to elective surgeries resuming across the state of Texas. This week, there will be several donation sites to help replenish the shortage. And you can go to KSET.com to see where you can donate. Just remember, you need to schedule an appointment before you donate. We've got that information on our website as well. Today, nearly every state has started the reopening process, and while the rate of cases is declining in several hard-hit urban areas, new clusters continue to pop up. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Federal Reserve says the economic recovery could take more than a year and a half. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. Today, nearly all of America racing to reopen. Massachusetts becoming the 49th state to start the process, all but Connecticut, welcoming back at least some of their businesses. It follows a weekend of rampant activity for Americans across the country. I think people are being pretty respectful. Crowds flocking to beaches on both coasts. Restaurants like this one in Cincinnati packed with people. Near Orlando, Florida, seven people arrested after chaos at a block party. Deputies saying they were hit with glass bottles. And as the U.S. opens, eight states are still seeing an increase in the number of new cases, including Texas, which reported its highest daily rate on Saturday with 1,800 new cases, many from meatpacking plants. We're going through 110 gallons of sanitizer a week. The U.S. now reaching a grim milestone, one and a half million cases of COVID
COVID-19, with the death toll nearing 90,000 and expected to keep climbing as restrictions are peeled back. So we're heading out of the suppression phase now, the one that's more effective, and we're accepting some community transmission as a result of this crushing blow to our economy. Today, President Trump continuing to push for that aggressive strategy, tweeting simply, reopen our country. Stock markets soaring today after American biotech company Moderna announced its experimental COVID-19 vaccine is producing antibodies and is proving to be generally safe in the first phase of clinical trials. This weekend, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell telling 60 Minutes, don't bet against the American economy, but it won't bounce back overnight. This economy I mean, will recover. It may take a while. It may take a, a period of time. It could stretch through the end of next year. We really don't know. The Federal Reserve Chairman says the people hit hardest by these tough economic times are those who were recently hired and making the lowest amount of money. He says of the people who are making less than $40,000 a year in February, almost 40% have lost their jobs in the past month. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, a man accused of hurling insults and objects at a Southside convenience store clerk and a San Antonio police officer says it was all caught on camera. They're trying to track down that man right now. Katrina Weber has the story from the scene and tells us police hope a few photos might lead to a whole lot of information. According to police, this was an unprovoked attack. It involved a customer who they say was belligerent and then turned violent. Surveillance photos show that man mid-stride, allegedly spewing racial slurs at the clerk behind the counter of the Lucky 7 Food Mart. Police say he walked into the business in the 5900 block of South Flores back on April 21st and unleashed the verbal attack. They say he then grabbed a can of beer and placed it on the counter, still calling the clerk names. When the store worker told him to leave, police say the man turned violent. You can see him in the photos with a knife in his hand, which police say he used to cut the clerk across his head. They say he left the store with the other person who you see in the background, the person wearing a red shirt and gray sweatpants. Police ask anyone who may recognize the man in the photos to call Crime Stoppers. Their number is 210-224-STOP or 224-7867. Reporting from the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Not all stories about the coronavirus are bad. We have a few, few good stories that are sure to put a smile on your face. It's in our KSAT Kids section. And high school football players have their turn to family members to keep their skills sharp. We have that coming up in sports. Yes, mom. A high school softball star's senior year came to a disappointing close, but in today's great graduate segment, we're going to take a look at how Mackenzie Vasquez's playing career is just taken off. It has been a senior year bombarded with disappointments and uncertainties, but one Barney High School senior is trying to rise above it all and just focus on her bright future ahead. In our great graduate series, Eric Hernandez introduces us to softball superstar Mackenzie Vasquez. The softball fields have been empty this season, COVID-19 restricting any kind of UIL play this spring. I think what was most upsetting for me was the cancellation of our softball season. Actually, we had a really good team this year. McKenzie has had a very successful high school career in softball, a starter all four years and first team all state in Texas, which means her softball career is not over. I had a few other offers and so um, when I actually got the call from Notre Dame, I was sitting in chemistry class and um, my dad called me, told me the news, and I was so excited. I knew right then and there I was going to Notre Dame, I was going to commit there. McKenzie will be heading to South Bend, Indiana this August to attend the University of Notre Dame, but until then she is trying to enjoy her final days as a senior in high school. I think it's tough just understanding that we're not going to get some of the... Um, regular privileges that most seniors got and um, but luckily our community has been so great in going the extra mile to recognize us and she offers a bit of advice for other students about to become seniors just don't take anything for granted just live it up while you can and um, take advantage of this of these moments 
Not only did McKenzie succeed on the softball field, but also in the classroom, finishing in the top 10% of her senior class at Bernie High School. We wish her the best of luck at Notre Dame University. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Different year for seniors, isn't it? My son is <laughs> not even sure how he's going to get his diploma this week, but... But you know what? One they will always remember, and the positive is nobody else will ever go through this, probably. Let's through hope. The, they'll have a story to tell. Yeah, yeah they will. Sure. Uh, let's take a look at the aquifer. It's actually staying steady today, but it's at a good point right now, 665.1. It's up quite a bit after our recent rainfall. And uh, as far as pollen goes, mold's in a high category. No surprise there. It should start to come down next few days. Grass is low. We've got some really hot temperatures to talk about. Then some more rain chances, too. We're going to take a look coming up. Good morning, it's Erica Hernandez here with another KSAT Kids News Brief. We start this morning with a look at a recent school parade through the eyes of our Stephanie Serna's daughter, Rooney. Rooney's excited, I think. <laughs> kind of last minute, mom couldn't make it. I know she's uh, working. Hi. Well, when it got there, it was even colder than I thought. Gracias, los extrañamos. My principal was there saying hi. Rooney! Ready, ready, ready! It was like festive. The cars were decorated, all the teachers' cars. Hi, My other teacher from PK4. Hi, so we went to our school and say hi to everybody. I went like this. My teacher from Kinder, she had to do a smile on her face even though she had a mask, but it looked like she had a smile on her face. Bye, so, so you love you. I miss you. I miss you too. It was so fun. The parade was awesome. I really want to go back to school. Mark Twain the Academy. Best school in San Antonio. It's English and Spanish. I need to learn more Spanish than English. I miss you, Rooney. It was fabulous. Thank you, Mark Twain. Have you ever seen one of these? They are commonly known as blue dragons, and this one was found at Padre Island National Seashore. They are fun to see and watch, but keep your distance. They have venomous cells, and their sting is powerful. Now, this was just a short clip of our KSAT Kids News Brief. You can see the entire episode on our KSAT Kids page right now on KSAT.com. Hope you all have a good week. Good Very good. Parade. Congratulations, Rooney. Yeah. And uh, congratulations to all the graduates out there. I know this is a really big week for all of that, and the weather couldn't be better. Yeah, it's shaped up to pretty nice next few days. Now, I will warn you, we've got some showers and some rain chances. As you always do. Holiday weekend. <laughs> Well, let's hope we can avoid them and it all works out. It is a holiday. It's got to rain, right? Well, that's that's the plan right now. Right now, rain chances are on a low end. Those could go up, though. So uh, keep an eye to the sky. Let's first start with the aquifer. I mentioned this. It's up quite a bit, up five feet. Now, that's since last Tuesday, to put it in context. And we've been monitoring it since we first kind of got those good rains uh, about a week ago. And we've had a couple of rain events since. And now we're up to 665.1 which is fantastic news because, because, again, that magic number is 660. The 10-day rolling average when we had 660, that's when uh, stage one restrictions start to kick in. So we're sort of getting away from that a little bit because of this rainfall. Uh, take a look at the time lapse. Beautiful this morning. Man, it was a perfect sunrise. No cloud cover, 86 degrees now. That full sun's allowing those temperatures to really warm up. Dew point is at 65, and we've got southerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Most of us in the 80s at this point, 85 in Kerrville, 82 Canyon Lake, 89 closing in on 90 there in New Braunfels, 88 right now in Pleasanton. A little bigger picture here, 87 in Gonzales, 88 Victoria, some 90s on the map from Caruso Springs down to Catula, our normal hot spots there, 91 out in Del Rio too. Dew points are going to start to come down a little bit, I think, as we get into the afternoon. It was a little bit muggy this morning. But those dew points should drop down into the 50s this afternoon, so it won't feel too, too bad. We won't have that heat index to contend with, but the air temperature is certainly going to be up there. Across the country, one thing I'll point out here is the whole middle part of the country is really quiet. 
Why is that? Well, it's because of the pattern. We have a big ridge sitting right over basically the central part of the United States. You got a low off to the east, a low off to the west. We call this an omega block because it kind of looks like the Greek letter omega. But uh, a lot of times this kind of stalls out and nothing really moves. I think we will see some movement here. So that's some good news. I think we'll get some rain back in uh, to our forecast. But a lot of the active weather right now is off to our east. So that ridge builds in a little bit more tomorrow. That makes things even warmer. So I think we could be looking at quite a few triple digits tomorrow. And here's the one change. Little disturbance rolls in, I think, by Thursday. That's going to bring some isolated showers and storms back into the forecast. And overall, we'll see a pattern change as we get into the weekend, which will allow for some rain chances. In the meantime, though, it's the heat that we're dealing with. High temperatures today, mid-90s here in San Antonio. We could see some triple digits out west. And then tomorrow, we go even warmer. 98 here in San Antonio, 105 in Del Rio, 101 in Uvalde. It's going to be a hot day tomorrow. Also got to throw this in here. We have a tropical storm just off the uh, east coast there. Tropical storm Arthur winds are at 50 miles per hour. This isn't a big deal and it's going to become subtropical going forward as it moves out into the Atlantic. But the first named storm of the Atlantic season forecast for today up to 95 southeast chilly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be a hot one, but even hotter tomorrow. 98 on your Tuesday, 97 Wednesday. And then some rain chances kick in, especially Thursday afternoon into Friday. Uh, 91 Saturday, 20% chance of rain. And a 30% chance on Sunday. Rain chances looking a little bit better on Sunday. Ursula and I were just looking at the computer models there for the second half of the weekend. And yes, Ursula, maybe a little more wet. Sorry to say. Okay. Well, I'm glad you conferred with me. My five, <laughs> my five minutes as a meteorologist was pretty exciting. <laughs> A local football player is staying in shape while he can't practice with the team. He's practicing with mom, getting the best training he can possibly get. Coming up. And baseball could be on its way back with some changes. See how it will affect the players and the fans. Major League Baseball proposing rules changes to start the 2020 season. The plan calls for an 82-game schedule to start in mid-July, but to operate, the league would work to make sure there is no spread of COVID-19. That would include processing around 10,000 tests a week for players and staff. While teams are on road trips, players will not be allowed out of their hotels to go to restaurants. In gameplay, players will not have any contact with one another. That means no high fives or fist bumps, and the umpire will remove baseballs that multiple players have touched. However, the rules would only come into play if there is a season. Right now, the Players Association has not approved a 50-50 revenue split with the owners. And the Kansas 12 Sports Department has been busy talking to a lot of our local athletes who are preparing for the senior year of high school this coming fall. We don't know what high school football is going to look like come August, but the student athletes are still preparing. And that includes Harlan's quarterback, Kanan Williams. Harlan is 20 and 5 with him as their QB, and his talent is shining bright enough that some Division I officers offers are coming in. He thinks even more will come once he gets back on that football field and can show the scouts what he has to offer. Um, I have uh, six six Division One scholarships right now, and um, yeah, it's going good. Um, I think it's heating up. Really looking forward to the season. I feel like that's when it's really going to start to pop off. You know, college is going to come down and see me play in person, so that, I feel like that'll help a lot. Just like a lot of young athletes, they cannot be with their teammates right now to train. So who steps up, like always, when the kids need most? Mom! And his mom, Rebecca, not holding back while her son has to stay home. She often catches passes for him right there. My mom, she told me she wants to train like, um, like I'm training for the NFL draft. I enjoy it. I, I love being out here with him. Um, I, I love spending time with him. This quarantine has given us uh, some additional time to, um, to just get out here and, and, and work on things. And my mom, she's a, she's a soldier. Um, she do, she'll do whatever it takes to, to help me get better. So, I mean, she's out here. <laughs> breaking her fingers every day trying to catch the ball for me. She went and bought herself some gloves. I've been catching balls for him since he's been throwing footballs. Um, and it just it got for a while where I wasn't able to catch for him because of, of the speed and the and velocity that he throws the ball with. When I can't go out to the field, she's here to catch for me. So, um, you know, especially with quarantine, you know, some of my guys, they can't 
get outside the house because you know their parents won't let them leave. So it's easy to just come out here and, and I, I got some gloves and, and I try to protect myself as much as possible and I think he probably doesn't throw 100% at me, uh, maybe 70% um, and, and just catch balls for him. You know, I love it. Yeah, you heard right. This is one mom who's not afraid to break a finger during a catch if it means her son will get better. Pretty tough. That was years ago, you know, that, that was, I, I want to say that was about his eighth grade, maybe freshman year of high school. Um, Might have been before that. Um, and, you know, I, I'll break a finger, I'll die for a ball, I'll get a scuffed knee, I, I'll do whatever it takes. You know, I, I was an athlete, I, I kind of know uh, the ropes and, and that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, he makes me proud. I have a daughter as well, and, and she's athletic, and, and they both, they're my world, and, and they make me proud, and I would do anything for them. I bet she could run a heck of a fade route. I'm wondering how hard he throws that ball to her. I, you know, throws those bullets. He lets up a little, but I bet not much. You got the gloves. She's ready to go. I bet you that hurts. I bet it does. All right. Coming up, President Donald Trump responding to criticism over his handling of the pandemic. And the critique is coming from his predecessor. Coming up new today at 5, whether you're working from home or helping with your kids' remote learning, Having a computer that is up to speed can make all the difference in getting the job done. Coming up at 5, we turn to the experts for the best options if it's time for you to start looking for a new computer. U.S. investigators have new details on that deadly shooting at a naval air station that happened last December. Mohammed al-Shamrani was a member of the Royal Saudi Air Force. He allegedly shot and killed three U.S. sailors and injured several others in that shooting before he was killed by law enforcement. The FBI was able to break through an encryption-protected cell phone that belonged to al-Shamrani. They found he was in contact with members of al-Qaeda. If al-Shamrani was directed by or trained by al-Qaeda, this would be the first time since the September 11th attacks that a foreign terrorist organization had been involved in a deadly attack in the U.S. The investigation is ongoing. Italy is slowly emerging from more than two months in lockdown. Shops, restaurants, even hair salons reopened today. This video shows some of the streets in major cities like Rome and Naples. Businesses still must maintain strict sanitary protocols and enforce social distancing. Even so, the Italian prime minister warns that reopening is a calculated risk. President Donald Trump hosting a roundtable with restaurant industry officials today. They'll be discussing how the coronavirus is impacting the industry. A source familiar with the meeting says chefs and executives are among those expected to attend. The Independent Restaurant Coalition expect to be represented at the meeting as well. The organization has shown concern about the Paycheck Protection Program. Former President Barack Obama using his virtual commencement address this weekend to get political and call out President Donald Trump's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Now President Trump is calling out his predecessor. ABC's Inez de la Catera has the latest. This morning, President Trump claiming his predecessor didn't have a clue and left him little ventilators and testing capacity, even though COVID-19 did not exist during the Obama presidency. Look, he was an incompetent president. That's all I can say, grossly incompetent. Trump's attacks coming in response to former President Obama blasting his administration's handling of the pandemic over the weekend while speaking to high school and college graduates in a pair of virtual commencement speeches. Oh, so. Obama never mentioning Trump by name. More than anything, this pandemic has fully, finally torn back the curtain on the idea that so many of the folks in charge know what they're doing. A lot of them aren't even pretending to be in charge. Obama piling on during the simulcast graduate together ceremony honoring high school graduates. Doing what feels good, what's convenient, what's easy. That's how little kids think. Unfortunately, a lot of so-called grown-ups, including some with fancy titles and important jobs, still think that way which is why things are so screwed up. This, as President Trump has been pushing unfounded claims that it was President Obama who was behind the Russia investigation, tweeting last week about impeachment, Russia, and so-called Obamagate more than 160 times. This was all Obama. This was all Biden. These people were corrupt. The whole thing was corrupt, and we caught them. And President Trump has also called for President Obama to testify before Congress about the origins of the Russia probe, a call that's already been rejected by some of his allies in the Senate. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington.
The National Defense Canadian Armed Forces had identified the pilot who died in that plane crash this past weekend as Captain Jennifer Casey. Casey was a pilot of the Royal Air Force's Snowbirds. That's the equivalent of the Thunderbirds or Blue Angels in the U.S. Officials say the jet went down in British Columbia, about 150 miles northwest of Vancouver. The team involved in the crash was on a cross-country tour to honor health care workers battling COVID-19. A few embassies in Iraq raising rainbow flags on Sunday to mark the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. The British and Canadian embassies, along with the EU mission in Iraq, all participated, tweeting their support for the rights of the LGBTQ community. The historic move was met, though, with mixed reaction from Iraqis on social media, and Iraq's foreign ministry condemned the move. The posts were later taken down from social media. Forty years ago today, Mount St. Helens erupted. The blast in 1980 killed 57 people and did more than a billion dollars worth of damage. The volcano in the Cascade Mountains is in Washington State, nearly 100 miles south of Seattle. Mount St. Helens was recognized as a volcano back in 1835. There have been at least four significant eruptions over the past five centuries. And if you were around when that volcano erupted, you remember even down here in South Texas, we had some of that ash mm -hmm. float this way. It's a mess. It was a mess. No ash <laughs> in the skies here today. Very pretty out there. Clear as can be. And it is gorgeous right now. Just a little bit warm. 86 degrees currently here in San Antonio. We've got another great picture on our KSAC Connect. This apparently is a night flowering cactus apple cereus. I'm not familiar with it, but it's beautiful, and it's a beautiful shot. Sandra's sending that in from Atascosa, and you know, the recent rains causing a lot of the flowers to really uh, bloom and be colorful so far this spring. Uh, air quality, not in great shape today. It's in the unhealthy category, at least for those who are sensitive to that. We're going to see high levels of, of ozone, or at least higher levels of ozone today. So there is an air quality alert uh, for uh, midday through the early afternoon. Just a heads up there. 87 degrees right now in Bull Verde, 89 New Braunfels, 83 Canyon Lake, 87 in Comfort, 88 Bandera. We're going to be in the 90s here pretty soon, I think. And the forecast for today takes us up to 93 by 3 o'clock. Eventually 95, our high temperature, clear skies, southeast Julie winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Dozing off on the job, something many of us can relate to. Well, I'm not going to admit to it, but work related fatigue is serious, maybe more serious than you think, even while you're working from home. ABC's Inez de la Terra has more on that. Do long hours and early shifts have you feeling burnt out and that extra cup of coffee not helping? A study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found that many of us are feeling weary at work. More than 60 percent of night shift workers aren't getting their eight hours. Even a third of daytime workers report sleep loss. Over time, sleep deprivation becomes fatigue. Fatigue is more than just feeling tired. The CDC says it's physical and mental exhaustion that can affect decision making, attention and concentration and may even have significant negative impacts on performance and safety. Lack of sleep is the biggest offender, but heavy workload and irregular hours also contribute. Fatigue means more mistakes on the job, which can be a workplace hazard for shift workers like truck drivers and pilots. Years of fatigue even causes memory loss and accelerated brain aging. It can negatively affect your family and emotional well-being. Especially during these times, as we adjust to new normals and schedule, make sleep a priority. Your health and safety matters to those around. You. With this Medical Minute, I'm Inez de la Quatera. Apple is taking its next step toward reopening in the United States. Stores could open their doors as soon as this week. And after 5G cell towers were burned overseas, the Department of Homeland Security offering their advice to protect them here at home. In your consumer news, the Department of Homeland Security advising the telecom industry about actions that can be taken to prevent 5G cell towers from getting attacked. This comes after numerous incidents that were started by fake claims saying the technology spread a pathogen that caused the coronavirus. 5G is a technology that has
has very fast connections that can power items like self-driving cars and smart cities. According to industry officials, there have been some attacks on towers here in the U.S. Kroger is going to be spending $130 million to say thank you to its employees for working during the pandemic. The company says the one-time payment is to acknowledge their dedication during this unprecedented time. As part of the thank you pay, full-time employees are going to receive an extra $400 Part-time associates will get 200. The news comes after the company handed out hero bonuses during the months of April and May. Ford says it will provide coronavirus testing for workers who show symptoms of COVID-19. The automaker announced the plan ahead of the reopening of some factories today. Ford says it will give the test to symptomatic workers in Michigan, Kentucky, Missouri, and Illinois. It says results should be available within 24 hours. And if someone tests positive, Ford plans to ask those who interacted with that person to self-quarantine for 14 days. The company also says it will check temperatures and make employees wear masks. Apple getting back into business, reopening more of its stores this week. 25 more locations in six states are opening back up. Some of these locations will only offer curbside pickup for online orders. Krispy Kreme has a treat for graduating seniors, free donuts. The donut chain offering a so-called 2020 graduation dozen. Half the donuts say two and the others have holes. So together they spell out the year 2020. Krispy Kreme is selling the sweets May 18th through 24th. High school and college grads who can prove their seniors can get a free box tomorrow. A pair of Air Jordans just sold for more than a half million dollars, making them the most expensive shoes ever auctioned off. They broke the world record with a price tag of $560,000, three times their estimated value. Basketball legend Michael Jordan wore these shoes himself during games in the 1980s. He liked his shoes mismatched. So one is a size 13, the other is a 13 and a half. Jordan also signed the other shoe. And video game sales at record high because of the pandemic. The strong sales are in almost every category from desktops to consoles, subscriptions and more. Call of Duty, Modern Wear and Minecraft are among the top selling games. If you are a fan of Hunger Games, get excited. There's a new release coming out, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by best-selling author Suzanne Collins is a prequel to the Hunger Games series. The book takes place 64 years before the events of the original Hunger Games novel. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is expected to hit shelves tomorrow. Okay, this is what it's come to with COVID-19 and nothing else to do. Movie critics at Buzz Bingo looked into which actors swear the most in their films. Jonah Hill has taken the lead with 376 curse words used throughout his career. That's just ahead of Leonardo DiCaprio with 361. Other contenders were Samuel L. Jackson, Adam Sandler, and Al Pacino. They also found that Martin Scorsese's The Wolf of Wall Street movie had the most swearing than any other movie with 715 expletives. You know, the weird thing is that there was time over the last couple of months to actually count cuss words. I was about to say, do you have to say, I, you would have to sit through every movie and yep. sit there and count. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting information, I suppose. Well, at Something. least you know what your kids shouldn't watch that <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street movie. There you go. <laughs> but what is a cuss word is what I want to know. Some words, you know, people don't think are really cuss words. So, and yeah, we digress. I, I don't know. Right. Talk to mom. Interesting stuff. <laughs> 86 Talk degrees to so far today, 67 was the low this morning. Uh, the average is 88, so we're going to be well above average today. The record is 98. We can get close to that this afternoon. We're going to talk about these hot temperatures coming up. Ooh, getting warm. Getting warm. Next few days is going to be very warm, and then it's going to back off a little bit for the weekend. It should. It should, uh, because I think we'll see more clouds, maybe a little bit more moisture. But right now, we're underneath a ridge, and that's just going to cause things to get really hot. That's bottom line. Next couple days. Uh, you guys mentioned one piece of our history today, Mount St. Helens. That happened back in 1980. We also saw the Goliad tornado back in 1902 on this date. And this is the deadliest tornado in Texas history. Well, it's tied with Waco back in 1953, but 114 people lost their life. And that was right here, really, in our viewing area down there in Goliad. F4 tornado swept through. So a busy day 
in weather history. Meanwhile, outside we've got blue skies, 86 degrees right now. Dew point is at 65 and suddenly winds at about eight miles per hour. Humidity is still up there a little bit, so there is technically a heat index right now, but we have no cloud cover and that's why temperatures will really shoot up today. Uh, right now, 86 at the airport, 87 at Randolph, 89 in New Braunfels, almost to 90 degrees there. 82 up at Bernie Stage, 84 Rock Springs, and we are into the 90s out in Del Rio, 91. You look at the dew points, they're in the mid 60s, and these numbers will come down some, I think probably low 60s, if not some 50s this afternoon. But for the moment, we do have a heat index in a lot of spots. Feels like 88 here in town, feels like 93 in Pleasanton, feels like 96 in Del Rio. It's pretty rough for late May. It's going to be a hot one, and I don't think we'll break any records next few days, but we'll get close. We'll be pushing some of those records, and right now we're thinking 95 this afternoon, maybe 100 in Carrizo Springs later today. Then as we fast forward to tomorrow, 98 here in San Antonio, and a lot of triple digits out west, 105 potentially tomorrow in Del Rio. Here's the setup. We have a big ridge over the middle part of the country, and that's why the heat is uh, really starting to kick up. Big upper level low over the Great Lakes, and that's producing rain there. And then, of course, we have our tropical system, Arthur, just off the coast of North Carolina. And then more unsettled weather out west. But we're in the middle here where things are sort of stagnant for the time being and very hot. This high pressure will move just a little bit towards the east as we get into tomorrow. And that's why temperatures should jump up a bit more. And then as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, Good news is it looks like this ridge breaks down a little bit. We get a little disturbance rolling in and that may get us some showers and storms Thursday afternoon and maybe again on Friday too. At least that's the hope and past that it becomes a little more active. So then the question becomes what about the holiday weekend? Right now there are some rain chances there. Doesn't look like a washout, uh, but we'll have to watch out for some showers and potentially a couple thunderstorms popping up. And it's that time of year too where we have to I'll look for any severe weather. 95 degrees today, and then tomorrow 98, 97 on Wednesday, 94 Thursday, 30% chance of rain right now, Thursday, Friday, 20% chance Saturday, and then we bump it back up to 30% chance on Sunday. But that is subject to change. Those numbers could go up a little bit, depending on how this pattern sets up. Once we get a little more clarity in the models, we'll be sure to let you know as we get closer to the weekend, guys. Looking hot and humid, no matter how you slice it. Yep. Thank you. A winning mentality leads to a strong volleyball program. We learn more about it coming up in sports. Four years ago, Arcadia University kickstarted their men's volleyball program. At the time, Eli Poor was pulling double duty as head coach for both the men's and women's teams. Since those humble beginnings, the Knights have blossomed to a national power and made their first NCAA tournament last season. A large part of the squad's success comes from the inaugural freshman class, which includes a Bernie native who has had his fingerprints all over the team's culture. This replays Andrew Seeley has more for us. Andrew Jafrida, middle opposite, Bernie, Texas, champion high school. Who doesn't want to start a first year program? I mean, it's literally like writing your own storybook. I get to have a say in the culture on campus and what we want this program moving forward to look like in the years to come. It didn't take long for Angelo Jafrida to make his presence felt on campus at Arcadia. He came in right away and like met these strength coaches and was like, listen, I'm going to be the hardest working person in this athletic department. I'm just letting you know right now I may be a freshman, but I will be I will be the example. I just wanted to establish uh, like a, a hard work ethic for the team. You know, I mean, I'm not the big guy. You know, I mean, we have six foot six and above players. We have a first team All-American on our team, but we got some ballers on this team. And um, where I fit in, in my role was in the weight room. You know, I was a leader there, I was a leader on the court, um, and kind of got the guys rowdy on the bench there. Every year he played a different role for us as a volleyball player, and he just would adapt and get good at it. He's all about the daily grind. That is what he lives for. Every day since that freshman campaign began, Arcadia has been building towards a goal set by Poor in 2017, win the national championship senior year. After claiming their first middle athletic conference title as juniors last year, the Knights were still on pace to accomplish that. Until the coronavirus pandemic canceled the rest of their collegiate careers while they were on spring break. We got the call from Eli and he said, season's canceled boys, so don't come back to campus. When we finished our out-of-conference play, we were sitting exactly where we wanted to be. You know, I mean, 
win the conference and you go to the tournament. That was always our vision. Um, and to be ranked and to have all the national recognition that we did, it was nice. It's a shame that we didn't get to finish out the season, but uh, I was there out in the court when we did. So it was just a pleasure to play. Once again, that was Andrew Seeley reporting. Here's a look at the legacy Gafrida is leaving behind. He's completed Arcadia's Iron Knight Challenge three times, is a two-time male strength and conditioning athlete of the year, and he has won the 2020 NSCA All-American Athletic Award, a fitting recognition for a remarkable career. And don't let the Monday blues get you down. That's right. SA Live is all about getting your week going with a motivational Monday. Did you struggle getting your day started? We're starting your week with a motivational Monday here on SA Live. We're turning one day of cooking into four nights of great meals. That's a guaranteed way to get your week started on the right foot. You know what will definitely get your day started? A great outfit. It's time to ditch that work from home look and time to dress for success. Learning is a lot more fun when you can make a mess. Our mad scientist is teaching us some wacky and wild experiments for the whole family. Gyms are reopening, but this one is opening for the first time ever. See the challenges they're facing and the adjustments they're making. It's a story that will inspire you. Well, don't let murder hornets and viruses stress you out. We're helping you relax and boost your mood with a lost art you can do from home. Doing more with your stimulus check? How you can make this much needed money have a bigger impact on your life. Well, summer's coming and we've got a way for you to win your own pool. And if that doesn't get you motivated, I don't know what will. A positively pool-tastic episode of SA Live is just moments away.